give me your MLB report card at the All-Star break right now. So at this point in the season, um, you know, obviously without it being biased, it's just a fact. The best team in baseball uh, is going to be the New York Yankees. Obviously, with the numbers we're putting up at home, obviously us being consistent away. Unfortunately, we did lose tonight or the last two against Boston, should I say, so we split the series. Um, and just the way that we've been playing baseball throughout the entire first half of this season, it's just we're dominating in all facets. We're pitching well. We're hitting well. Um, you know, the coaching staff looks to be running on the same page. I mean, Boone's been ejected a couple of times, so there is life you know, out there in this team. And then, of course, you know, we are always looking to maybe bolster this roster, especially in the terms of how Matt Carpenter has turned out to be as successful as he has. We might be willing to make some moves at the trade deadline. Some rumors are having it that maybe Joey Gallo might be uh, coming off of the uh, coming off of the roster with his recent struggles. And then most disappointing team, or no, surprising team, it's going to be the New York Mets. I don't think anybody saw the Mets having the record that they do. I mean, I don't think anybody in the NL East, especially after the Braves were got Okuna back, that the Braves would not be in first place. And I know it's only a game and a half, but you know the Mets currently have the best record in the National League at 53 and 33, which is, again, I always joke around and say they're the little sister, little brother to the, the Yankees, but I got to give them their flowers. They're doing really, really good. They're staying consistent, and again, it's just the first half, but for them to be as consistent as they've been all year, uh, swinging the bat and then, of course, pitching the baseball, it's it's been a sight to see. I'm just you know happy that both New York teams are doing what they need to do. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Now it's the most disappointing team? Yep. All right, okay. Just double-checking. Uh, most disappointing team for me is going to be the, LA, the, uh, the Anaheim Angels, the Los Angeles Lakers, whatever. Lakers, wow. Los Angeles Angels. It's crazy. Uh, you got roster that's just star-studded with, you know, obviously Mike Trout, Otani, Rendon went down for the season, but you have just, you know, bats like that. You have the pitching staff that added Noah Syndergaard. They fired Joe Madden. It's just, it, it, it looks to be an absolute dumpster fire in L.A., and, uh, you know, between the injury bug and the struggles, Mike Trout being hurt and then going into a slump, Otani getting uh, figured out sometimes depending on, you know, what it is he's been pitching. Uh, I know when he faced the Yankees, he kind of got rocked, uh, which made me feel good. But, you know, overall, just a team that you expected after they went 28-17 and 17 competing with the Yankees for the best record early on, or in, early on in the year, it's just unfathomable for them to be as bad as they are right now. And if I'm not mistaken, the Angels are currently sitting at 38 and 49, uh, 11 games under 500. And of course, you're sitting here and you're looking at it, and they are 19 games back out of first place from the Astros. You didn't expect it, especially with the start that they had. So a little bit painful to, to watch, but it is what it is. And then, you know, we, we, we go into the worst team in baseball, and that's going to be the Oakland Athletics. Not only is fan attendance at an all-time low, but they're just uh, in a, an abysmal 11-31 and 31 at home, and that's a big contribution to the fact that they don't have anybody supporting them. They're not swinging the bats very well. Their ERA is probably one of the highest in, in the MLB, and then they can't even get it done away. Granted, their away record is better than their home record, but they're 18-27. and 27. So you look at it and you say, this season has been interesting. There have been some ups and downs. There have been some surprising teams, but overall... That's going to be my report card thus far for the first half. Kevin, I mean, when I look at my MLB report card um, at this point in the season, um, it's pretty much along a similar line as you. I may only have like one team that may be slightly different, but um, I'll just start it off from here. So to me, the best team in baseball right now is clearly the New York Yankees. The Yankees have just been firing on all cylinders this year from top to bottom. I mean, they're the first team to 60 wins this season they hold a considerable lead over the second or third best team not just in the american league but throughout the entire uh, mlb as a whole it's just it's really kind of a testament to their excellence when it comes to playing just phenomenal baseball this year i mean judge is playing up to snuff stands right behind him and their pitching staff has been absolutely phenomenal nestor cortez has been amazing this year he's going to I believe his first all-star game appearance later this week, um, just really from top to bottom, no matter how you slice it or dice it. I mean, the Yankees are just on fire right now. Just when you combine how they've been pitching, how they've been hitting, this team is just, just flat out amazing so far. So as far as I'm concerned, um, it's the Yankees and it's not even 
close. I mean, the next closest team is probably like either the Astros or, or the Dodgers, and they're like five, five and a half games back of what the Yankees have been doing. So really, it's a, it's a testament to how they've been playing extremely well this year. Uh, my most surprising team, uh, very similar to you, Kev, is I'm going with the New York Mets as well. I mean, they're off to an, an amazing start this year. They're over 50 wins. Uh, they've been getting great contributions from their hitting. I, really, like, I want to focus on their hitting here. When I look at the guys that have been just consistent the entire year, I'm looking at guys like Starlin Marte, Pete Alonso, Jeff McNeil. I mean, these guys are always in the rotation. They're always out on the field for the Mets, and these guys are just lighting it up. Uh, I'll take McNeil, for example. He's batting 311 this year. Starlin Marte is batting 291. Pete Alonso is batting 273, and he's hit 23 home runs to boot as well. Um, Mark Kenya, I believe that's how you say his name. He's batting 273. So, I mean, that's just four or five guys that I've mentioned. I'll, I'll throw Francisco Lindor in there. Um, statistically, when it comes to his batting average, I mean, he's batting 240, which is not awful, but could, a little bit of room for improvement. But he has hit 15 home runs. So he's done pretty solid so far alongside the, uh, the 60 RBIs he's brought in as well. So kind of similar to what Kevin said, um, my two top teams or the two teams that I, that I picked are very similar to what Kevin picked. And then I'm going to kick it over to the more disappointing teams. And just to kind of start it out, my most disappointing team is the San Francisco giants. Uh, the reason why I picked the giants is last year, they won over a hundred games. They had 107 wins in a very competitive NL West. They ended up actually winning the division over the Dodgers by one game last year. 107 wins last year I thought was phenomenal for the Giants. Well, this year, they have definitely come back down to earth, and they're sitting at a 43-41 and 30, uh, a 43 and 41 record, excuse me, which is just a touch over 500. Now, I understand that Buster Posey retired last year, and that's definitely a huge gap to fill, but I'm looking at other guys like Luis Gonzalez, Jock Peterson, Wilmer Flores, Mike Yastrzemski. Like, these guys are just not necessarily putting up the numbers that they were last year. I mean, granted, I understand they lost Chris Bryant as well, but I mean, outside of Luis Gonzalez, it, you know, Jock Peterson's only batting 260. Wilmer Flores is only batting 240. Mike Yastrzemski is batting just under 230. It just, overall, it just doesn't seem like the bats are on point with the Giants this year compared to last year. Now, granted, they have a lot of time to kind of make it up. They still have the rest of July to figure this out, August and September. They could turn it around, but the way that I see it is the Padres are better than them in the NL West, and the Dodgers are clearly better than the Giants at this point right now. So the Giants got a lot of room uh, for improvement here. Um, I think if they make it to the playoffs somehow, uh, it will probably be in a wild card position, but they definitely got a tough road ahead of them. And then to round this out, very similar to Kev, uh, the team that I've picked here as the worst team in baseball, it is the Oakland Athletics. It's not even close. They have the worst winning percentage in all of baseball with a 33% winning percentage. That's just abysmal. I mean, I think their average attendance when it comes to home games this year is just like around four or 5,000 people. It really goes to show uh, the lack of support that this team has, and it's based on the, the fan attendance. They are not showing up to the games. The team as a whole, they are just struggling in every single category that you could think of. Their hitting is not that good. Their pitching is not that good. Just overall, this team is a tire fire. They're not going anywhere anytime soon. And if you're an A's fan, I, I, I hate to do it to you, but just I'd start looking for a different team to root for because the A's are just not going anywhere anytime soon. 